Hey teacher friends, welcome back. It is wonderful to see you. I am Nina Rodriguez and you are watching Miss Fit to Teach, where I talk about all things teaching and how to stay mentally, physically, emotionally fit to teach. If I do not already know you, please join our growing community by hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you and I can come together every week. Ordinarily, I get right into the topic of the day, but today I want to take a moment to uh, give a shout out to study.com. Study.com has been an awesome platform uh, so far this year for me. I have to admit, um, with the growing use of like edutainment, all these different t-shirt platforms at our disposal, I was a little bit skeptical about trying study.com or seeing what made them um, different from the rest. But I love that study.com is unique in the sense that it has given my students in class access to a plethora of practices, um, project ideas, different areas of content study, but it's unique in that it also provides content for teachers to practice for their exams toward their teacher licensure and more. So if you are wondering what is a really useful platform that both serves our students well, but also can help you on your career trajectory, give study.com a try. Now remember, we are teachers, so we never pay full price for anything. If you use my code, which I've included in the description box below, low, um, you will get 30% off your first three months. Enjoy. Okay, so let's get into it. Again, with a squeaky chair, I know I need some WD-40. I'm working on it. Please just give me a little bit of grace. But anyway, I wanted to talk today about um, Gen Generation Alpha. And you might have already seen them coming to a classroom near you. Generation Alpha is an interesting little bunch and here at the high school level we, we don't have, they haven't trickled into our classrooms yet, but they're going to very, very soon. So what is it about Generation Alpha that we teachers need to be aware of and prepare for so that we can put our best foot forward without losing our minds? Characteristics of Gen Alpha and how they differ from Gen Z. This is the group of kiddos that are generally born from 2010 to 2024. They are projected to be the largest population of human beings uh, that we've ever produced. They immediately proceed from Gen Z. It is believed that they will have accumulated or will have been given the most possessions of, of most material possessions of any generation before them. And they are projected to have the longest lifespan we've ever known. Not to mention this group of kiddos is the most culturally diverse. Have you taken a look at modern classrooms? You might notice that uh, they're pretty heterogeneous with different cultures, different languages, different skin tones, different races, different ethnicities, all colliding within the four walls of our classrooms and in our school buildings. The world is changing and basically Gen Alpha is a physical manifestation of that. Now, it should come as no surprise to anybody that anyone pretty much born after 2000 has experienced a whirlwind of technological advancement. Gen Alpha is the first generation that will be completely enmeshed in technology. They have no previous experience of what life was or has been without technology, such as smartphones, and they are fully connected basically at all times. These kiddos are technologically savvy, having uh, early experiences with things like tablets, social media, computers, your smartphone, and some of them even their own smartphones. And they understand the technological landscape at an early age. Now, there are some positives to being this technologically savvy, but there's also some significant drawbacks that we have started to uncover with our Gen Alpha kiddos. One of the more significant ones being the shorter attention spans of this population, given the fact that they're accustomed to just kind of skimming for information on the internet and in other forums. They're well acclimated to video game culture and they often will have several different games that they, uh, they are active on on a fairly regular basis. Because of Gen Alpha's heavy use of internet and technology and screens, we may also find among this group that there seems to be a reduction in their levels of creativity. And that's largely to do with the fact that for these particular kids, uh, toys 
don't really come in the form of like physical dolls and, and action figures and toys or cars and trucks. And these kids are heavy into electronic devices. And their idea of fun often comes in the form of playing games and staying connected either with kids um, within their immediate proximity or kids well across the globe. Now, while it's been wonderful for millennials, late millennials such as myself, or early millennials, I'm part of the, the, the generation uh, sort of forgotten known as Generation Y. Um, it's been very nice to watch our young little alphas bud and blossom and get excited about the new world they're living in. They are unfortunately projected to have um, some of the most significant mental health issues um, in modern history. Now, part of that, yes, is because of the COVID crisis. They lost a lot of time learning valuable social skills, um, problem solving, group working, um, conflict resolution, uh, things, things like that, that we often pick up within our classrooms. They didn't get the benefit of those lessons during the year, the year and a half, even two years or more, that those kids were outside of the classrooms and confined uh, in the confines of their home, which was then turned into a makeshift classroom where they learned on screens. But the other part of this is because we've become um, more hypersensitive to mental health, especially in, in recent years, and we are more likely to address a possible mental illness within our youth um, at an earlier point. With the decline in mental health, of course, we're also seeing spikes um, in the rates of depression and anxiety among these young people. And that's not necessarily because of COVID, certainly COVID didn't help it, um, but it's also to do with the social media landscape that these kids are enmeshed in all the time. Now, it's important to note that correlation does not imply causation. However, it's worth pointing out that a lot of research has found a connection between a social media connectivity, screen usage, and rates in mental health crises among young people. So now that we've set the stage and given some background about our Gen Alpha Cherubs, how can we as educators be better prepared to serve them well in our classrooms, giving them the education they deserve while making sure we don't lose our sanity in the process? First, since Gen Alpha's preferred format is video, it's worth our time to at least dedicate a portion of our lesson to video content. That is to say, finding excellent YouTube videos or content on an online forum that can serve as part of our lesson. Since they love video formats so much, this will help to grab our alpha generation kiddos attention. Of course, this video format should be tempered with either some group activities or preferably some kinesthetic uh, work activities that will help to balance out their heavy usage of, of screens. So consider implementing group projects in your class, things where they are required to use paper, pencil, poster board, markers, uh, colored pencils, stuff where they're encouraged to write by hand or things where they are, are forced to think creatively and encouraged to think outside of the box um, without fear of uh, feeling foolish or feeling unprepared. That's why putting them in a group is best because um, they don't have the pressure of producing something on their own. You might call me terribly old school, but I am of the, the, the belief now more than ever that schools should be cell phone free zones for all of our kids, not just Gen Alpha. But since our Gen Alpha children are mostly in elementary school with some of them, with a lot of them trickling into middle school, some of the oldest may be in about eighth grade, um, it's worth it to ban or heavily restrict cell phone usage within your classroom. While they're still at an age where they'll be reasonably receptive to that. Now with high schoolers, that's a little bit di more difficult and more challenging to sort of get around. So if you're looking for a way to ban cell phone use from your classroom, I've created this video, which you'll see um, in the cards. If you're looking for uh, sort of a, a tip on how to gently encourage children to surrender their phones or to put their phones away in within a, an elementary or middle school classroom. If you're in a high school classroom, such as myself, we really wanna steer away from, from having them 
from confiscating their phones, but instead you may do well to frequently remind them of the consequences you have in place if you catch them using the cell phone in your classroom. And also you wanna temper that with giving them opportunities in your class to check their phone. So for example, my classes are a 90 minute blocks. And so we, we have to have a break in the middle of our, of our class period. Otherwise we lose our minds and just be exhausted very quickly. So I have a 10 minute intermission right in the middle of my class period. This is the time where my uh, high schoolers are able to go to the restroom, get some water, take a stretch break, uh, speak to a friend, and of course, check their phones. And when they have this, uh, this opportunity in class, it helps to cut down on the cell phone usage during our lesson because they know that there will be an opportunity to check those things later on. It's worth implementing some play, weaving play into your curriculum as much as your curriculum will allow. And we want to do this while they're at an age where they're still receptive to it. Again, getting a bunch of high school students to sort of play during lesson can be a little bit more difficult since they tend to be more self-conscious, but since Gen, Gen Alpha is fairly young, this should be a, much more easy to come by. That means elementary school students absolutely need their recess time to the full extent that you're able to provide it. Take your lessons outside of the classroom, whether you're in middle school, high school, or elementary school. Scavenge your hunts, group work, go to the library, go outside to the school's patio. Experiments, art pieces, research projects that are best done beyond the four walls of your classroom. All of these things would do very well to implement more of an interactive play mindset. It'll discourage their heavy use of internet since they're in a different setting, which will provide for a very nice um, technology detox. And finally, take stock of your classroom and rearrange it in such a way that would foster collaboration. And what I mean by that is consider moving away <clears throat> from the standard desks in rows and instead create clusters with your desks or create uh, different groups, sections of your tables and chairs where students are having to sit in small groups with people they wouldn't ordinarily choose to sit with. Which is to say, your assigned seating is heavily, heavily important with Gen Alpha. As the old saying goes, birds of a feather flock together, and Gen Alpha, as diverse as they are, they're not all that different from that rule. So it's very important with this particular group of kiddos whose, all, whose attention span is already relatively short to sit them with students uh, with whom they wouldn't normally coalesce. And I said finally, but this is the final point, I swear. You wanna check in with our Gen Alpha students in terms of their mental health. We can easily do this during our class time, again, by weaving brain breaks in, either like in the middle of the class period, the way I do, or at the end of the class period, um, five to 10 minutes, 15, might be pushing it a little bit for your curriculum, um, but definitely a, a 10 minute break, if you're able, as long as you're able to provide it. Our kids need time to process, they need, they need downtime, and you need time to talk to them and get to know them. They need time to talk to you. Projects or assignments, announcements, short articles, anything, uh, uh, visitors from, from their counselors, anything that can sharpen their awareness of, of mental health, their own mental health, and what to do if they feel like they're struggling is going to be very, very useful both for you and for them. Now we've been speaking in general terms during this video uh, because obviously uh, not all kids are the same and it'll be hard to speculate on some of Gen Alpha as many of them or the last set of them are not born yet. But since these are the general characteristics that we're seeing from this uh, interesting group of kiddos, it's really important for us to, to be reflective and introspective about the, our best practices in raising up and educating this group. If you have found any other characteristics about the Gen Alphas in your classroom, leave a comment below for our community. And as always, do all you can to stay fit to teach. Be well.